<laughs> Fine. Feet feet works too. Sorry. I'm trying to think of like the distance when I walk to go get them. How many streets? Like the width of a of about streets like a block. Away. Like, not a block, but um. Now I'm trying to think of streets. like the like the width of a road. Right. I want to say maybe fifty feet. Fifty feet. Okay. This is this is from you with your bow. I, I'm gonna Google it. Maybe to, I can find to the, the target. Range. And and what is this? What is this class of of archery that it's called again? Kudo. Kudo. And you're learning Kudo. from an actual Japanese master in Japan. Hello, everyone. We are live. Welcome to Hell's Vengeance, the Pathfinder First Edition Adventure Path: The Foul Play Podcast. I am your host, GM Jeff Ball, and tonight. Frank's in the wind again, but he'll be here to play Gary and the Butcher sooner than later, we hope. Congratulations again, obviously, to Ryan Messina, who is Mr. New Dad once again. But I do have more news. If I can draw your attention to the audio voice and video of Miss Alexandria Tamlin Ball, say hello. Hello. It How are you? Didn't draw. Oh, there we go. She's got a brand new microphone. She has agreed to not just NPC, but permanently join the Hell's Vengeance Foul Play podcast. Daddy's so proud. Thank you. So when we play, you will be seeing Alex on a permanent basis as a permanent official player when we come back to the show as we cycle it around. Now, I just for funsies, I recently had a little um, poll. You can do polls on Twitter. And like Star Wars is a given. We're always going to be doing Star Wars and there's patrons backing it. Uh, but as far as Pathfinder is concerned, we have four Pathfinder shows and not time and new, you know, new schedules, COVID, everything to shoot them all, all the time. We've got to rotate through them. So I asked the internet, where should we put our focus in Pathfinder in the new year? And the choices were Pathfinder 2nd Edition, Age of Ashes, the Elven Portal podcast, which is really big on YouTube, but not so much in our podcasting world. The Dice Before Dishonor, All Cavalier. The War for the Crown, which is about to finish its first season, going second season. Um, the Man from Assyrian, Mummy's Mask, which is halfway for, through its first season. And this show, which is just really getting going, the Foul Play Podcast. And uh, there's about, I think about 25 people voted. But we were surprised to see that this show got the popular vote. Like it was number one at 44%, and then second edition, and then Dice for Dishonor, Mummy's Mask were like tied with the lower vote. Um, and I just thought that was a fun thing to do. It has nothing to do with certain current elections going on in the world, but uh, you know, the fact that evil is winning out on our vote, um, <clears throat> you know, could possibly give one pause uh, looking into 2021. Tonight, returning as his role as the tall, silent type, Tithe the living grimoire inquisitor tiefling mr joe gibson's in the house hello hello and of course starring back from from well i gotta say like here's a guy that is devoted to my show uh mr matt witt recently had surgery and the guy is literally kneeling in front of his computer just to play with us so we will we're not going to do a double header tonight we're just going to do the one episode but uh gotta thank get my you. fix man I gotta get my fix <laughs> game fix <laughs> Mr. Witt, thank you so much for joining us uh, it's a pleasure. this evening. It's more than some other perfectly healthy players are doing, but that's fine. That's fine. Not bitter. Not bitter at all. So I believe I had to cue some battle music because we had not one, but four deputies went stomping off and you thought they left the area after the sheriff, whom you guys just summarily s dismissed. A sheriff which is directly related to one of our NPC characters, Alex's character, Simri Stalish. Her aunt, the ranger, is a sheriff, Ronna Stalish. And she's gone. She, you don't see her lurking about. Coming around the corner of this building. So looking up from the south is a walkway, another big, I love these decks on these buildings, on these maps, like the, everyone just loves that big Ponderosa deck. I mean, this stairway is 20 feet wide with the big rail and the deck is 15 feet deep and the deck itself goes like 20 feet in one direction, 15 another. There's a freaking couch on this deck. And this is like the jail. <laughs> I just love these great big, you know, carpentry decks 
Uh, I think they're fabulous. Um, bottom left of the map are two pillions. Is that what they called? Pilliards? The old stock and barrel. You know, put the medieval justice where you put your hands and your head through and they throw cabbage and stuff at you. And around the west side of the deck is a big trough for horses. And the building recedes about five feet, continues west. And around that corner, lurking, coming around, fanning out, we have the four deputies. And I'm just going to pull up some cards here. And did I have you guys roll for initiative last game? I think I did. Did I not? Mm, maybe. Maybe? I know. Terrible, terrible I form. remember turning around a corner, seeing some pups, and then I think we called it. Okay. That's right. I think I, I, think I ended up saying, well, roll for initiative. So I will have you, ladies and gentlemen, roll for initiative now, calling out your rolls, if you please. I will roll for Gary and leave him around the... Extra so, 20 for 22. Not bad. Garion's got 19. A whopping five. Eight. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> All over the place. Yeah, really. But that's okay. So, um, starting with Tithe with his 22. <laughs> um, these guys forego um, surprise by coming around and kind of doing the, hey, you know, and they're still babbling about this ain't right or whatever. They fan out in the nice wedge formation and they pull not their clubs, but saps. These guys arm themselves with non-lethal weapons, but they, you know, start marching around on an intercept course that you guys are not barely going to get off this map, though technically you could run for it if you wish. Um... And they're coming at you. They look hostile, intent, with their little squeaky choice apps for non-lethal damage. How quaint. Tithe, what do you do? As I'm reading right now, I will. Oh, shit. I will cast. Let me. I'm just looking. I'm going to cast a flame strike. On myself. Or what? sorry, fire strike. It's a supernatural ability. Okay. On, uh, on yourself? Yeah, well, on my weapon. I eat my book. <laughs> Turns it into a, like a flaming weapon, does an extra d4 points of fire damage with each hit. Okay, and this won't damage the book? Nope. Because you are allowed, as per the Inquisitor archetype, to use said book as a weapon. Yeah. Yes. Very cool. So, with some mumbled dark prayers to the... The one who rules all. <laughs> <laughs> Can't say his name out loud. You know, you don't want, like, the big pentagram popping up underneath you going, oh, return with to sender. No! Ah! You know, so. Lots of implication. And the grimoire bursts into flames, readying his weapon. All right. Next up, we have Gary and the Butcher, who... At the moment, just seems distracted because Nico was talking to him. So I will have him hold, which brings us to the actual baddies. Or sorry, in this case, your opponent. And as I said, they came out, presented themselves. They called out to you. You guys are like, what? And they march on up. So we go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And they just, you know, come up to you. Nope. That's right. You should be leaving. Leave the keys. You know, because you guys are like, are you like walking out of here with the loot? Like, does anyone have like a, does a Gary got like the chest full of all the, um, all the, uh, contraband? You know? Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, like <laughs> money, drugs. Don't forget the Taladian uh, opera porn. Like, that was, a, that was just still shaking my head over that one. Her Majesty's, Her Matrix Majesty's tea surface, and so and so's final salute. I mean, come on, that's just too bad and funny. Okay, so it's obvious that you're kind of loot in the place. Anyway, they come forth, fan out, 
and, you know, ready in action. They do a move, they all get their saps out, and they fan out. Get out of here, give us the keys. You're not staying here, this ain't right. Let's see what you do. Nico, it is your turn, sir. What do you do? Um, 5, 10, 15, 20. <laughs> it's probably going to get me killed. But why not? I'm on pain meds. <laughs> <laughs> Move here, facing the walk up to him, facing the first guy. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying anything. I throw back my cowl on the way. And reveal the reveal the, the mask. Yeah. And uh, I am going to cast uh, Burning Hands. Okay. 15 foot cone in front of me. All right. I'll take my attack of opportunity. Sure. Sorry. Cover. I guess he didn't say cast defensively. <laughs> and you you stopped right in front of his nose. So sorry, dude. Swing batter 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 batter. And a nineteen plus oh, that hits. plus yeah, three. So <laughs> you come up and like, you know and swing and poof. And he does, with my little sap here, he does 1d6 plus 1 non-lethal damage. So you take 4 points of non-lethal, and we actually have, in Fantasy Grounds, you actually have the subduel, so I can put, like, 4 in there. Yep, yep thank you. it's done. Awesome. Oh! Garion! Oh, hello, I still have a spell to cast. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was just saying, uh, Gary, and you were speaking with Nico, and all of a sudden he just goes, runs, runs off, and starts doing his mumbo jumbo and gets right. hit on the side of the noggin. So hang on, I still need a concentration check because you were hit. You need to make a concentration check. Really? Yeah. With, with uh, divine spells. Well, your choices are cast defensively and try and pull off the concentration, which is fifteen times to the spell level, or a spell check, which is only 10 but you got to add the damage and the spell all right so where would i find concentration on your character uh it, it no guff <laughs> uh it should be uh oh the formula jeez it, it evades me one second here um it should be under your actions uh but, but yeah so under actions where it says oracle there's a, at the right there's a dice that says cc okay Got it? Six. Fail. Okay. So the little squeaky toy, he whaps upside the head. You take four points of damage and missing the DC of first level spell. So that's two of 16. Uh, yep. It's funny because that would actually have been lower than you defensively casting. Because 15, two times spell level would have been 17. Technically. But he wouldn't have got his attack of opportunity this way. Okay, so you're down hit points. That's not, I guess that's not, uh, it's never a good idea. And you eat the spell. Garion, destroy! <laughs> Simmery. Well, they seem to be picking on the boys, so I guess we're not going to be playing nicely. Hmm. Do, do, do. Is it just me, or can you see them? Is the map working? Yep. Oh, I'm on the wrong building. Lather. Sorry, please pan to the right. Yes. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> runs off like over the jump of the page. I'm hiding yeah. itself. It's so awesome. Look at that. Right. <laughs> right. I will. Thirty feet. Okay. Twenty-five, thirty. I don't think I can get up on any of them. I'm too far away. Uh, you can double move and end your turn in front of them, but of course that leaves you open. Or if you wish to just 30 foot and pull a weapon, you know, that kind of thing. 25, 30, or run. 40, run, Forrest, run. 50, 55, 60. I'm going to just come around the thingers, around the stockades, and come up behind. So, flanking. yeah, not so south. Double move, come around. Very good. Solid, solid road tactic, not too shabby. 
Which brings us to Gary and the Butcher. Frank Hamilton's in the house. Yay. Hello, hello. Hello. Yay. Frank. All right. Long story, long story short, we fired the sheriff and took their loot. You're carrying a chest with full of contraband of drugs and porn and all kinds of, and I, I do mean like Taladian naughty plays. And the deputies left, but now they're just not having it. And they try to ambush you, but their ambush is kind of like, they head around the corner, wait for you guys to come out. Now they, they're just confronting you with their little non-lethal saps. Nico, who was your handler in, in Professor Niles absence, was speaking with you. And also he ran off, cast a spell, ate it, got hit inside the head. And now combat looks like it's going to ensue because your new best friend, Nico, wishes you to, what was the line there, Nico? Garion, destroy. All right, so uh, with chest in hand, I'm gonna mm -hmm. go ahead and drop that. Okay. Then while moving, I will draw my weapon. Okay, which is? It is a great sword. Okay. A great big great sword. Yep. 30 feet will put you right beside Nico if you want. And I will move to there. Okay. And then cool. I will rage. And then I will power attack. Uh, is rage a swift action in first edition or... Can't remember. <clears throat> Excuse me. Rage is a no action. It's just a modifier. Okay. You just... Or no, it's a uh, swift. Sorry. Yeah, so it doesn't really cost you. Nope. Okay. All right. I'm assuming your target is the guy adjacent, or do you have reach? Because you have reach, do you not? Uh, I do not have reach. No, oh, okay. I'm considered medium-sized, but I can wield large-sized weapons. Okay. Oh, I totally no forgot reach. to target him. Uh, it's okay. Uh, this is uh, this is um, homebrew. This is sponsored once again. Shadow, thank you uh, to Devin Knight for the use of his minis. But uh, Fantasy Grounds, who we owe a lot to, has been doing second edition and most of first edition games, but they haven't released this. So I've been okay. cutting and pasting, and so I don't have all the mechanics down. So rolling my evil dice, and, you know, you just let me know. All right, so does an 18 hit? Yes. <laughs> Ooh, hit points on paper. Uh, it's been so long. Excuse me while I... <laughs> and uh, you used to be alive, and you used to be yeah. alive. Continue. Not, oh, not great damage. 15 points. Dude that sat me is a smear. Oh, dude. Yeah. Just he, runs he, up. You managed. You man. He he goes down. You open him up. Now he doesn't. You know he's not slain on the spot. You didn't get negative ten or negative his con or whatever. But he is into the negatives and he goes down. So the guy right in front of um, Nico falls to his knees and face first. Anything else, Mister Butcher? I uh, know. I, I I think I'm done. Okay. <laughs> Um, the guy, remember how I said, you know, they all come up to ready in action. They don't have a ranged weapon and their, their ready was something I really can't do at this time. So they're just going to, unfortunately, they're going to have to eat the round, which brings us back to Tithe and his flaming holy book. Yay. Nice flavor, by the way, Gibson. Thank you. I like that. It says book, holy book weapon on fire. And <laughs> yeah. I will move. All right. 30 feet. Okay. Right to my left. And I'll be attacking uh, the one on my corner. Okay. North-ish. <laughs> one I can reach. Yes. The adjacent. I'm getting there. Actions. These guys have fanned out sort of a, a leaning arc from south up to the east. And we have Gary and Nico engaging the top guy. We have Tithe gone slide down the middle, engaging the second last. And then we have Simri, who's slipping around and lining up something. So what do you got there? Does the 12 hit? No, unless you have a bonus. <laughs> do you have a bonus on that flame to hit or is it just damage? I have damage. Okay, so, so close. Yeah. No, welcome to the first level. What's that? Okay. I'm done. All right. And next we have them. So uh, no real stealth involved. Simri did full moves. 
she didn't cut her movement half and try to like you know no bluff no direction they came out they spot the four of you and she does go wide but you know they are paying attention so this one guy tracking her turns um sees that you're involved with his buddy and like cover me and he goes steps away from the pack to engage Simri. This guy here takes a five foot step south. Oh, look, the deputies work in tandem. Some light training, isn't that cute? Moves south to cover his buddy's back and will engage Tithe. This guy goes down. So I'll just move him over to the trough here for a second. Or, you know, his butt, okay. Not complete awesome training because these guys are like just looking at the guy next to him going, cover me. And the guy's the top one guy goes down in a split second. I go, cover them, cover me. And he steps up and just wildly comes at Gary and with his little sap. Five foot step corner. Oh, you know what? I can't do that. That is not a friendly that I'm moving through. That is difficult terrain. So I can't legally do that. Oh my. So now I have to move south of square into Tyth's threatening zone. And as I exit said square, Tyth attack of opportunity, if you wish. The guy who moves I, through your threatened squares. I do. Okay. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> 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 All right, does the 17 hit? Does yes. <laughs> okay. With the, I'll get him on the backswing. Alright, so... And so, uh, j just so on. we're clear, uh, the difficult terrain was basically the body. If I drop a body in a square, I consider that square difficult terrain, friend or foe. Because they're literally something you could fall over. Some meaner DMs would just be like, and you fall over the body because you thought it was there. So it's like, no, you drop guys and, you know. So always kill moving backwards and leave, you know, thumbtacks in terrain. So, sorry, okay. Tithe. So, uh, six points of damage and four points of fire. Oh, wow. All right. And you thought I was the dangerous one. Yes. Now, uh, fire is in like heat damage, or do you, can you actually set someone aflame with this? I will tell you one second. Okay. So while he's looking that up, this guy's turn moves in, and I will roll for these guys attacking you guys. So let's start with the one that's turned on Simmery. Coming at Simmery with a 14 3 is 17 simmery i'm gonna wager a guess and say probably probably you bugger by one. Oh, really yeah haha -ha. and he's and he's he's uh, upset how you do that to dare do that to your auntie girl you you had this coming you get a whooping <laughs> And it makes like the little squeaky toy noises as it bashes you in the shoulder. And you take five points of non-lethal damage, which I shall stick on your character there. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's awesome. Way to be prepared. Simri is always ready for everything. And squeak. Um, can't believe you just pulled that out of thin air. That's awesome. Um, next we have the guy that's attacking Tithe. Watch you you attack his companion and taking advantage of the uh, of the opportunity, he steps in, but with a terrible seven, uh, misses you because you slide lean for that swing and his attack whistles harmlessly past the side of you. And last but not least, a 22, 19 and 3. 22 to hit Big Garion. What's that, Garion? I was muted. Um, yeah, my armor class is 13 right now. Oh, okay. So you're big guy, and he, he whacks you, like, right in the gut. Alex, if you please. Ready the nads. Thank you. For five points of non-lethal damage. And then you just take it. And he slowly looks up. Like with this scared apologetic look in his face. <laughs> like he immediately just <laughs> regrets this decision. Because in these seconds, right? Garion is raging. He's just turning purple. And I ran into attack, hit him. And then get a good look at his face. And the guy's going into a rage. He thinks it's his fault, right? Nico. 
Nico, Nico. What do you got for us, Nico? Fools. All of you. Um... So because that guy's adjacent to me, I'm going to uh, five foot step. Is is beside the trough right here? Like, is would you consider that difficult terrain at all? Well, the problem is, is because you're f crossing over the train's corner, like my guy tried to. You have to go up and around. So all right, then I'll just five foot step back. Okay. And now he is adjacent hands. to you on the corner. Like you are allowed to attack the guy with no penalty because neither one of you is standing in said terrain. Uh, Nikolai does not attack. Okay. Okay. <laughs> he's got he's got an innate minus four to attack rolls because of his withered trait. So I will instead cast inflict pain. Okay. So if we took the mask off, you actually are withered up. Um, my arms are, not my face. Oh, okay. You don't even have like that cool thing that comes up the shoulder and peeks up the neck. Um, Is your okay. condition encroaching upon your health consistently? It should work. Why didn't it work? What do you got? Uh, you can't target these minis because they're not in the system, so. Oh. That's what I was telling Frank, so tell me what you're doing. So I'm inflicting pain upon him. This is a spell, an innate ability? I yeah, it's, a spe it's spell. Okay. Um, infi inflict pain surrounds your hand with a dull red glow, allowing you to send blindingly hot pinpricks through your target's body. This deals 2d6 points of non-lethal damage, plus one point per caster level, and the target suffers a minus one penalty to attack rolls, skill checks, and ability checks for one minute. Okay. Is uh, this a touch see, attack? No, it is ranged. 25 okay. feet okay. plus 5 feet every two levels. Um, saving throw is DC 15 uh, fortitude partial. Okay. Uh, let's see here. 7 and 4 is 11. That is a fail. Fail. What happens now? Do tell. He takes seven points of, or uh, eight points of non, oh no, plus one per level. It should, that should be eight points of um, non-lethal damage. And he suffers minus one penalty to attack, roll, skill checks, and ability checks for the next ten rounds. Negative which? How Negative much? one. Negative one, okay. Yeah. All right, and he took eight points. All right. Good to know. Anything else, sir? Step back. Um, no. I, uh, uh, yes, actually, I am going to activate my Cloak of Darkness. Is that a swift? That is a... I don't know if it says. It doesn't say. It's, it's a class feature. Hmm. So I'm so, thinking that might be a move action, depending on how powerful it is. Well, the spell is a single action, five foot step. I should have an action. What's the name of the power? I'll look it up real quick. It's called Cloak of Darkness. Okay, I'll move to Simri and we'll see if that poofs off, poofs up while we're, you know, in stasis. So Simri, you're up. What do you want to do? Um, I quickly, am I allowed to look around and see if there are a crowd? There is a crowd. Are people observing us doing this? Okay, so for free? Like ambient perception, I could say yeah. no. If you want to be certain to make sure like no one's hiding, observing that kind of thing, then I'll take a perception check and that will cost you an action. Oh, sneaky but... hidey people can be taken care of later. If okay. there is no evident crowd, <laughs> we make it to new. <laughs> there is no evident crowd. Now, are you standing up on the corner of that palace? No, I'm just around the side. Okay, because cause it takes up most of the square. This is not a difficult terrain thing. This is a, you know, this could be a height advantage thing. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, I could have okay. snuck around. And so give me a, around. give me a retro climb or acrobatic check. The DC will be relatively low. Oh, fuck. Nine. <laughs> Don't worry. The DC is like five. Like I said, it. 
<laughs> itself is not very high. You can just kind of hop, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, however, because you took a double, did you take a double move just to get to that position? Did you have any movement yeah. left? Okay. So now you, you know, hoist yourself up there. Ha! That's the bad news. It moves. It burns a move action. The perception for free. You know, evident crowd. You have an action left to attack whatever you wish, but you get a plus one for high ground. Excellent. Mm. I stab at you. Okay. You have yet to pull a weapon. You guys weren't walking around armed. Garion drew his sword, dropped his chest. Nico started casting spells. Tithe. Now you can... Oh, actually, no, sorry. You did a double move. You're allowed to draw weapons whilst moving as long as you have a base attack of plus one or higher. So let's just quickly look at you. You should, because your NPC uh, is actually... I think you're actually a second level character. Your base attack. I am. Yeah. Well, my base attack is what? plus three. Well, she's a, she's a ride-along NPC. Oh, I know. I'm just giving you a Oh, time. okay. So you're good. So what weapon, like I said, just... just Why, I'm the leader, Frank. Just, just, <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> um, I'll be kind. Or for later recompense of like, come on, guys, give me a break. Um, slipping a weapon as you strode along there, what what do you got in your hand? Uh, a dagger. Okay. Stabby, stabby. Stab at you. It's Yondel time. Just... Do, do, do. Oh. Okay, I clicked that more than once. My apologies. That's okay. 2019 both hit, so either one, you're good. Oh! Excellent. Oh, no, your dagger possibly crits on an 18 or higher, so sorry. Okay. Because you could take that as a confirmation. You do hit him. Okay. <laughs> now, were we going for the non lethal? You know, the hill, hill to the. Yeah. Okay. I um I will be non-lethal for now. Okay. Now, lucky for you, non-lethal weapon use for a weapon that is not supposed to is a negative four penalty. However, a 16 still hits him. So flipping the dagger at the last second, because he mentions your aunt, the guilt sets in. Whap! And you can go full damage, but it is non-lethal to the guy. So You don't know my life! <laughs> you don't know me. Um. Yes, d4, plus any strength bonuses you have. Sorry, I'm still a little new to the fantasy grounds. No so. problem. Um, if you just pick up a D4 right off the board there and toss it into the chat. Ah. No, into the chat. One. One. And one for strength, so that's two. Now, next time, at the very bottom left, do you see modifier? You can put in the little plus one, and I'll give it to you later. So two mm. points. Whap him. And that has been recorded for prosperity. Bash. He closes one eye. Little blood gush. And he doesn't move or go down, but, you know, he looks unhappy with you. Gary in. First, though, getting back in time. Nico, Frank, what did you find out about that power for us? So I posted a link there, and that's from the PFSRD website. Okay. It doesn't say, so generally, Pathfinder 1 rule of thumb is if it doesn't say it's a standard. Okay, so I didn't do that then. <laughs> okay. And yeah, it, it would, would probably have, like, as soon as you described us the fact, it would probably be big enough that I would probably say that's at least a move, if not a standard. So that's okay. But you have next round. Now, back to Garion and his butchery. Um, well, I am understandably displeased that somebody hit me. So I, I will. I, I could see that. I could, do you have any uh, up all up in your head for us? <laughs> no. No. Um, he'll just continue to froth at the mouth. <laughs> Try to run his great sword right through the guy. Uh, does a nineteen hit? Yes, it does. Twenty-one points of damage. And Dude, this Dude. is this is um, uh, this is the guy that Tithe just backhanded, right? And I inflicted pain upon. He is dead, dead. That guy is super dead. <laughs> oh, really oh, he might have already dead. been down, actually. I don't know how it works in uh, first edition for getting non-lethal damage on top of lethal. Um, 
You know what? I think I accidentally screwed up because I think I gave Joe's guy in front of him and you backhanded somebody. So he had three left before you had Adam. So he's unconscious. So sorry, Gary and the guy in front of you, mm -hmm. he hits you and then Nico goes and his eyes roll back in his head and he jerks in pain and falls at your feet before it's your turn. So the two guys in front of you are actually down. You wish to step over and continue the fight with the next two opponents? Feel free. I'll even let you keep your rolls. I'll stab him anyway. Oh, okay. <laughs> Would you like to right. take a full round action standing there to coup de gras the helpless dude? I think 21 points if he's unconscious is pretty close to coup de gras. Oh, um, a... Nope, he, he's just going to drive his sword like through him and into the ground, give it a little quick little turn. Okay. And then step over him, 5, 10, 15, 20, to okay. there. Right. Look that guy dead in the eye. I'm killing you next! As you step up, the last square is threatened by him. Yep. And as you come, uh, <laughs> he's focused on Tithe, misses the, misses the stab. And as you suddenly come up in his peripheral and move past him, he, you know, reflectively reaches out and takes a whack at you with a 12. Oh my god, he misses. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> and there you are, intimidating as you are. And... Alright. So, not going for the coup de gras, not full round actioning, just taking the plus 4, 19 becomes, you know, really high, uh, take 21 I, I points. Would, no, it's yeah, fine, it's really, you just go with the that, damage, yeah. That kind of focus is kind of beyond him at this point. He just chops and. No, yeah, I, and I I appreciate the flavor. You're keeping your dice rolls. You know that's cool. So the guy in front of you, like if you really, really calculate this, he took it, eight points of damage, five nil, and then takes another twenty one. Well, you know what? You can just wait and see if he gets back up, or if you know if everyone wants to kneel down and pull off their sunglasses to do a heel check, you can you know determine if he survived that. But for right now. And Nico's just standing back there watching this unfold. Ah, 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 yes, Gary, destroy! <laughs> Party unleashed. Tithe. All right. I will... The one yep. in front of me. Yep. Take a whack with the flaming I'll book take of... Take a whack with the flaming book of... Okay. I just assume... Oh, no. No, it's fine. fine. <laughs> just, you know... Yeah. The flames start spreading up your hands. Crap! Oh no! Wait a minute. No, no. I'm assuming you are unharmed. Yeah, it's just okay. It's... Well, I'll tell you the best part. Okay, um, you hit a guy with a flaming book in the back. He runs up, hits Gary in the nads. Right, all this stuff happens to him. He goes down, and as he falls, right, Gary drives his sword, gives it a little flick, and it's just enough to kind of moat the flame on the cloth that's around his armor, and he just kind of like. There's like this this little corner flame on the bottom of his t-shirt like starts and starts spreading up the body. <laughs> because of you, Tithe. Because of you. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, still perfectly good flavor. Um These guys. I'm gonna take a free five foot step back as I'm almost cornered. And they, you know, t real time catches up to them. Okay. <laughs> what you do? Well, the funny thing is, okay, I love when they script bad guys because then you always have players going, I did this. Shouldn't they do this? Shouldn't they run? Shouldn't they dot? Right? They usually have, you know, now you got to be ad lib. You know, they're not all circumstances are taken, but it specifically says, if any of the deputies are killed or knocked unconscious, we attempt to collect their bodies and escape. If prevented from fleeing, <laughs> deputies surrender once two or number of their slain are debilitated. So one guy goes down, we're reevaluating, and you guys swoop in on your turn so quickly, we don't have time to process, like, we should run. You know, three guys running, grabbing the guy and going. No, two are down. These guys throw down their weapons and go, don't, st just, you know, we just, just, you know. They surrender. 
They throw down their weapons in front of you, Gary and, and Tight. The guy steps back and throws down his weapon and says, No, don't kill us. You know, we are just trying to, you know, we're just unhappy. You know, don't kill us, right? Anyway, he bumps into his buddy who's fighting Simmery, waving her, you know, he's still kind of holding his forehead, and he glances back and sees the, what's going on. Two guys are down, and he's like, yeah. He'll take a five-foot step out, away from Simmery, and throw down weapon. That is what they're doing on their turn. Isn't that cute? Nikolai. I believe you were mid-manacle after. Yes, I was. <laughs> I'm having so much fun! Inflict pain. <laughs> okay. On the one who took the step away from Simmery. Yeah, the one that's in front of Garion, 10 feet away. Yeah. Okay. On the edge of your peripheral, yeah. Yeah. So you need a DC 15 to have the damage. Okay. Fortitude. That is really looking strange on this evil dice. It looks like an S. Either five or seven, though, plus my bonus, I believe he fails. So he, yeah. he just so starts... Ah! Nine, nine yeah. points of non-lethal damage. He, he just starts yelling and looking at his hand like he can't believe that head wound from Simmer. He suddenly hurts his entire body. Unable to process and takes how much? Eight or nine points of non-lethal. Nine points of non-lethal. Yeah. All right. 2d6 plus one per level okay he's still standing but he is yelling and is in bad shape simmery did we find the keys to the stockades um possibly if you didn't find in the room chances are that the deputies or you know stalish herself has it has them I believe you said she left everything. Yes, but they they specifically mention a key for something that's on, you know, not there. So, um, I, I can take a moment, but if the answer is yes, if the answer is no, while I'm looking this up. Yeah, Sim Simri would suggest that we lock up the two that aren't bleeding out and drag the ones that are bleeding out back inside before anyone notices and we get a riot on our hands. You can continue to play with them later. Okay. Garion. Uh, well, someone screaming in pain surely going to catch my attention. Okay. Yeah! Five and, step. And, and, and Simmery starts. <laughs> Guys, we really should. He's just. <laughs> Mid rage. Oh, Does God. What is, 26. what is a natural 18? Like, is it a natural 20 to crit on the greatsword? No, it's 1920. Okay, good. Just missed it by that much. <laughs> that much. Okay. Uh, 22 points. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Dude! He literally, Dude. again, with the top of the shoulder straight down to the hip, and the top half of the guy just slides off the bottom half, and the hips and the legs are twitching from N Nico's pain, remain in place. The dude cleaves him in twain as he hits negative 20 hit points, and the guy just cuts him in half. Garion screams in laughter. <laughs> Round five, Ooh. Tithe. Ooh, that it's was a good fun one. Now. <laughs> that was awesome. Or not. Dude, or not. Or not, Tithe. yes. I'll take a five-foot step forwards. <laughs> the guy's like, no, no. He sees his, yeah, he turns yeah. over. He sees what happens to his buddy. <laughs> you know, he step up. Tight yeah. for the finishing move. Natural 20. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Natural 20. And guess what? AC is 13. He confirms the crit. I confirm the, the crit. crit. Confirm okay. the crit. Yeah. No escape. Hold on. I'm having nice. fun here. Oh. What'd you get? It automatically oh did the damage we are for you. And so destructive. So 14 for Jesus normal damage Christ. and six of fire. Okay, so <laughs> when you do a crit on a weapon, you double the physical damage, you do not double the magical damage. Oh. Sorry. Okay. Two then. Okay. So 14 and two. Okay. Aw, only 16. <laughs> only 16 from a book. Okay. <laughs> the big so, book. He um 
Now, I'm, I'm not saying that some backwater towns in Chaliax are a little run down, might be a little loose in the law, and maybe somebody had like a little bit too much to drink today. I'm not saying that. Drinking on duty, nothing against any fantasy or real police force. But digging deep into imagination for a crit, he catches the man in the jaw and it wedges in his mouth. And with an evil grin, just tighten his grip on the grimoire. The flames well up into the guy's face and his alcoholic breath causes his head to catch fire. And he goes down the top of his head, a burnt husk. Our turn. The first guy that went down <laughs> continues to bleed out a point. Everybody else, well... Nico. So the first guy that went down yep. also happens to be the guy that hit me. Yeah, he's the guy that it made you eat your spell. All right, I'll coup de gras. Okay. Um, my get, I, down, uh, get down on my hands and knees. Okay. Grab the guy by the shoulders, hold his head over, and. <laughs> oh, dude's having a snack. I could say this one's still warm. Not dead yet. Now, That's do you true. have do you have the dampier feats that boost you when you uh, no. partake of the special homemade wine? Nope, not at all. Okay, so this is just personal now. Yep. All right. Simmery, you are starting to see even more about what your strangers in a tavern are capable of. The brutality of the large barbarian, the cool, quiet, deadly efficiency of the steamrolling cleric and his fire, and the finesse, sneaky, underhanded viciousness of the man with the mask. Boy, do you miss the quiet, chilling, creepy doctor. <laughs> What's your yes. turn? What do you do? I will rule this town. Obviously, Simri's, um dealt with conflicting emotions throughout the last little while and she's probably going to have to sit on this tonight mm. and debate her further courses of actions with regards to being part of this party <laughs> life choices <laughs> yep everything has consequences well as long as we're all up in your brain there is one thing I can tell you tell the audience if you know because the DM's allowed to meta and the player is not um Simri is a woman of conviction, and she vowed to do anything to get out of this town. Now, it's not like hit the road with five bucks, because getting out of a town could also mean moving your way up the social ladder, gaining power, and then moving on with said power. If you want to get out of a town, it's probably because you dislike it. And Simri has been so determined, her dislike somewhere along the road might have turned to hate. If you hate a town, you could leave it or you could stay and make it suffer. We shall see. We shall see. Garion, your turn. Garion drops his sword, drops out of rage, catches his breath, reaches down, picks up the half of the twitching corpse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Garion, kill you good. <laughs> Just kind of shaking him. He's talking to, like, the legs. He picked up the wrong half. <laughs> Garion, kill you good. <laughs> and I'm going to end the battle music. <laughs> Nikolai steps up, grabs a handkerchief from his okay. pocket, wipes, starts wiping the blood off, okay. That's looks like over. <laughs> Is this why your ascot was like the removable tissues? Because you get blood on the top one, you just pull it away, and there's fresh ascot. Yep. Awesome. And uh, and just turns and looks at them casually and says, "We must dispose of the bodies." Simori, do you know of a suitable location? She looks around. Anyone in the immediate vicinity? Nope. Excellent. We can take our time then. I'm going to roll a knowledge local and see sure. if she can think of. Yep. 
I got a perfect spot for you. You hit that roll. Twenty-three. The tannery. Those open, <laughs> festering pits of poop and pee. No one's gonna go digging in there for a body, and the place is already a crime scene. It's a hike out of town. You may yeah, have to go should, through we, a gate, but we should we should find a cart. Yeah, this might be a night run. So if you yep. can stash the body somewhere till nightfall. I want to say that was like two days ago, but that was just like last night, wasn't it? Night before last. Yeah, night before last. Yeah, yep, it's been last. quite a weekend, Simmery. Good for you. <laughs> it's time <laughs> to go get paid. So what do you guys want to do with the bodies for right now? This is interesting because usually heroes are like, I'll oh, let the gums rot, right? Like, we're doing an evil campaign. It's like, so what do you do with the bodies? No, Immediately, not... we can move them into the lockers. <laughs> Just smash them into the lockers, close there them up, is... lock us. No Until one's we coming. find a cart. No there... one's coming as far as we know. Well, considering one of these men have been cut in half, there is a lot of blood on the ground. Not to mention you're like having a big snack there. And there's, then there's a water th trough. Then there's Just like knock over the trough. <laughs> put up the, the water trough. <laughs> yeah, no, that's yeah. Gary, and there's a you know ten foot water trough. You could just drag that over and dump it on the grass and dissipate the blood. Sure. Um, did I hear there was places to store bodies inside? Yeah. So if you okay. look at if you look at your map there, do you see the table of four chairs? Uh huh. Above it are cabinets that you guys found weapons and all kinds of stuff. Oh. Gary reaches back behind him, pulls out what would normally be a short sword, but is a giant cleaver. Oh God! I butcher good. <laughs> Chop. Okay. Chop. So here we are just out in front of the jail. Like, it just happened. Table's inside, Gary. <laughs> but the thing yeah. is, like, uh, like you ever seen, like, a uh, meat room in a grocery store? Like, there's, you guys, if you guys make a huge mess in there, it's going to be very difficult to clean up. Fair enough. We have the water trough here. It is well, best to clean kills outside. Blood get everywhere. Gary, uh, Gary. This is not the place to do this. Mm -hmm. Trust me, you are making more of a mess than we need to. And it's easier to move in big pieces, is it not? What about behind the building? That would be a start, yep. Yeah. Cover the knife. bodies. Bring mm -hmm. them to the back. We can do it there. Puts it away, all dirty and gross. Fine. Grabs okay. up two corpses and begins dragging them. All right. I'm going to get out my old percentage dice. Some missing deputies. That would have <laughs> skipped town. <laughs> if you guys drop one guy, they just scoop up and skip town. Like, they just vanish. They're going to be gone now. A little of the old percentage. See we are not playing a good campaign here, Jeff. No, I know. I just, and I just thought it was fun to point out. Like, so many people were interested. I think would it be? I know it's kind of meta, like not just to let the story roll and kind of backtrack, going, "This is what would have happened," but just for now, you know, like because a lot of DMs are probably interested in how this is written. You know, I just think it's funny that even if you guys hadn't killed them, they would have scooped up their injured one friend and beat town, which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> Uh, but no, I will not consistently roll back time and reveal everything that would take away from the fun from DM and, and people like, that want to like play this. Nikolai yeah. has just been so reserved for so long. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> like he's just you, like you. You haven't chowed down since we did the play test and footage that we haven't really released or buried or whatever. So yeah, that's uh... Uh, okay. So, um, luckily, no one seems to happen by. You guys take the bodies around the back corner here, you know, get Gary in a little little corner to work. See that the, the big niche in the back of the building there? Right? Just back uh I see that there. Back yeah, just, the back just around the first corner, right? It's 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 facing, you know, away. Uh I guess we could pull up the the old map of Long Acre. And you know, with your trough to like spread around, you guys, you know, just put the time in. As long as you don't get spotted. I'd say it's worthwhile. Yeah. Um, I'll keep and, an eye and, out. And but, um, Nikolai away. would focus on leaving no trace. That's kind of the thing, you know. Well, Nikolai can drink his fill. That would keep the mess factor down, I suppose. Also, we have somebody that could literally burn the bodies. Like, the book's still going here. You guys have got two, you know what I mean? Like, 
There are options in the evil uh, or world. Nikolai, <laughs> Nikolai would be absolutely down for that. He'd be like, yes, burn them. Yep. Let's have a nice little campfire and then... This is gritty. And, you know, Simri, maybe you don't want to like just like leave them to it and go inside and make your next plan or burn it into your mind going, this is my choice. This is what I've chosen. Anyway, um, I'm going to pull up the map of Long Acre because the actual um, sheriff yield. There we go. Come on. Doop. You guys seeing this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So going to, let me just double check my, my written map. Uh, Cause I want to make sure the back of the building isn't just like a road. You know, you guys are like, we'll go around the back and there's the people going by the grocery store going, Hey, how's it going? <laughs> How are you? Oh, are you having an open market? What are you, what are you butchering? You got a calf there? Oh my God, that's Floyd. You know, like we're <laughs> got to make sure <laughs> before night falls and we can just uh, get rid of the bodies. Gary, all Gary together. just shrugs long pig. <laughs> Pig with like toad. Those are my boots. I loaned Floyd. You should... Cosplay. All right. Um, now, don't forget, like, you guys have completed the mission. Like, your mission was post four postings and fire Stalish. So, you guys are free to return to the tea house whenever you wish to demand or ask nicely for your payment that was promised you. Let's not forget about that. Now, whether you want to do that late tonight after you get rid of the bodies or, you know, you guys want to hang out here and go through the loop, what uh, what are you guys down for? Well, Gary and go through loot immediately. Okay. He's power hungry. Want things, stuff, shiny. All right. So, um, as in last episode that you that you missed they found potions weapons um some drugs like pesh and they found these uh a voucher for a halfling slave um Ooh, uh, gary wants that okay no i don't think anyone's really claimed that um oh that's so awesome a collection gary, of Gary's seven halfling <laughs> slave don't know where he is this is just like it's not like he's here but the, the his ownership writ is written in you know yeah, uh, oh, I almost forgot. Garion, a masterwork bronze scizor. You know, like the the big oh, cu yeah. cup mitt with the, the curve coming out of it they use in gladiator uh -huh. rings. Yeah, masterwork, dude. Masterwork. A wand, uh, scizor. And I'll, take the, I'll take the wand for sure. The scizor is decorated with the sculpted skeletal lion. We found some posts, things that we thought might be poison or drugs. Uh, and a collection of 17 pornographic Taldarian Kortos containing scripts for two performed plays, including Her Highness's Tea Service and The Guardsman's Final Salute. Nico claimed those pretty quick. Um, you guys had seven skull-shaped onyxes that no one's appraised yet, a pouch containing 10 platinum, and a bill of ownership for halfling male, 20 years, service trained, missing toe on left foot, responds to the name Winston. I mean, Arden. Sorry. Um, so, yeah, let's talk about the loot. If you guys are going to camp out, is there any, if any of you guys are going to haggle or claim, like, you know, Garion's interested, one's interested in the, in the plays, one's interested in the halfling. I think think we were passing out the skulls i know simri scooped the money uh t the tithe was given the poison to you know evaluate and hasn't given it back yet and the drugs <laughs> and then everything was like oh are you or we could just keep it in this chest and garyan was toting it around but not before they made you put down that big couch that you were lifting you almost oh, picked yes. up a couch and threw it at people the couch <laughs> the couch on the porch um, yeah, so, you know, that's, that's where we're at. Um, so some finite party treather, treasure, you know, is a, if anyone wants to lay claim, like speak now, we can do the haggling I, I'll later. I'll take but... the wand. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I think you mentioned it last time. Gary, the wand, the wand and the porn. Okay. Uh, Simmery? Yeah, some of the skulls and... The cash? There, there was obviously no money in this chest when we opened it. 
Obviously. Nice little sleight of hand, a pouch containing 10 platinum pieces, but you pull out the bill of ownership, wave it at them, go, this is the only thing in my pouch. And the hand, you know, sleight of hand, right? Can I have said sleight of hand, check? If you're going to pull this crap off right in front of your... Yes. I want some platinum. It's not these two crazy mothers. <laughs> it's ty it's Tyth I'm wa worried about. Dude is always like standing 10 feet away from you guys, always watching. He looks like he's reading his book, but you know. Yeah, always watching. Always watching. You also got to remember... Um, Tyth didn't go on your first mission. After you guys performed the first mission, he was given to you by Rislargo. And even and though that... he's been sort of like your wingman for this mission, you know. I didn't Would have been a 20. It. Okay. <laughs> I didn't see it. Then Nico with his 15. Yeah. Anybody? No? I'm sure I'll roll this. Would be pathetic, yeah. Yeah. But... Well, this is this is this is a classic, right? The the rogue of the party tries to park pocket party money on the side. Who saw it? Who you know gets upset? Where's the paladin? Nope. Y'all saw nothing. Nothing. Ten whole platinum pieces, all for you, which is technically hundred gold. The skulls. Uh, yeah. Do you guys want to praise them? Can anybody appraise them here? It's a free. Oh. It's a free skill. Everyone has a praise. I mean, sure, some I'll... of you might be good at it, but I'm just saying, like. 14. Okay. Garion looks at him. Worthless. 11. <laughs> Simmery. 11. Uh, you would guess that they're worth over 20 gold each. It's not okay. an exact number, but, you know, with that much, you know, Without telling you exactly, you know they're worth more than 20 gold apiece. There's like seven of them. I'll divvy them up. Okay. Um, There's five of you. Are there? Yeah. Well, I'm okay. assuming you're going you're gonna to so save. Are we saving each. any for Niles or he bailed on this mission? Yeah, you didn't do he this mission. Here. Here. That's right. He bailed on the whole <laughs> mission. You don't get, oh, that's a school. No. He stepped out for his own personal interest. Now, you guys yep. had several mini missions. This one mission, you know, he gets Jack. That's cool. Right. Yeah. No, that's fine. He'll be back, Jack, but for today. I don't owe him anything. Does anybody yeah. here owe him anything? <laughs> yeah. Sell the last two and divide the... Uh... No, two each, right? Five of us. Or or I guess it's... it's just four of us here, right? Yeah. But there's seven, not eight. So oh. someone's going to be... Oh, hand it. One. Yeah. I'll take three. <laughs> I'll take one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not arguing with the giant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you for letting me have this one. And he starts Six. reaching for it. That still leaves three that yeah, Nicole yeah, yeah. and I have. Screw that one <laughs> They start like completely evil, right? No one's looking. You Everybody guys are gets two. They're all doing Nicole rock, pa paper, three. scissors. Yeah. Gary said he took three. And then yeah, Ty said he uh, took one. Well, so that so leaves that three leaves between three. you and I, Nikolai. No, he, he didn't have them. I appraised them. I'm divvying them out. Thank you very much. <laughs> Gary, um, nice try. Every, well, everyone unless roll, you want roll, the rest like of them over. from me, which you totally can. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. So I divvy them out. Two, two, okay. two. Holes I in keep your the last one for myself. There, All right. Well, you get two. All right. Combat is its own reward. Isn't that right, Nico? <laughs> Yeah, I got my meal. So, like I said, two, 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 <laughs> and then I keep the last one. All right. So, shall we return and talk to good old Roslargo at the Ash House? Get our other reward. Absolutely. All right. Yark. Money. Yes. Returning on the outskirts of town to the Ash House. Simri takes you get guys back out there. And I'm assuming we're after we divvy up with Rose Largo when night falls that you guys are going to head back and, you know, grabeth the body -eth. Unless you want to leave somebody here to guard the jail and make sure no one discovers. Because right now you guys have them stuffed in the closet and the place sits there empty. Well, we could lock the jail up. It could, and I, will, could be I will tell you that you guys do Been find... Light it on fire. You guys do find keys on the bodies. And that would be for, you know, the cell the pallards and those cupboards that you guys smashed. So now you guys have keys to like the whole place. You can lock the front door. Yeah. 
lock it up. Okay. And then burn it. Yeah, you got a new base. Set it on fire. What? (laughs) What? Nikolai will never argue with burning things, so probably (laughs) don't suggest it to him. Well, Simri declared that Sheriff is her new job, right? We had the boots up thing. So as you guys are like walking away and she's out front doing the final seven leading you and the place blows up and you guys are like digging it. She's just like, you could just see the rage on her face. Like, (laughs) got some perfect face ball. No, no, seriously. Do you guys torch this place? No. I just say not not yet anyway. It would save a trip to the tannery. They died in a fire. I, they weren't here when we left. I have no idea what happened. Yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> you guys want to loot the place, leave the bodies in there? Yep. Perhaps someone may scrutinize. Nikolai thinks this is the best idea anyone's come up with all it's day. Ever, an ever. excellent <laughs> on-site location we could use as headquarters instead of constantly trying to get back into town and dealing with the annoying gate guards. Mm. The Ash House is a rundown piece of crap. I mean, this is a solid building, but it's up to you dudes. You know. like oh, I, No, I, if, if, she, if she objects, I, I, I'd say no, because it, it, it does have strategic yeah. importance. I mean, Especially if what we've been contracted to do so far can, like continues, you know what I yeah. mean? No, if Messina were here, you know, he'd be doing the, the you know the dog between the two owners. Only this time, I think it's tight where he's like looking at the yes and the book emotes and flames, and, like and then you say no, and he puts much. it out <laughs> back and forth. All right, Gary, and you have uh, we all weigh in on the arson? Yes, no. Yeah, fire just cooks things. Yeah. Mm. I don't, I don't care. Okay. So you boys want a bonfire. We can just take them outside of town and have one. Excellent. Excellent. Oh, I was putting forth arson covering the, you know. And again, uh, yeah, I, you know, heavy handed on DM is my part. I shouldn't fill you guys, but it, I'm finding it hard. For, I'm watching you guys, the wheels turn. It's, it's kind of hard to be evil. You just, these ideas just don't come to you like when you're playing good guys. Right. Oh, well, just a little arson cover the body, you know. So yeah, there's a little bit of spoon feeding in the first couple episodes, but trust me, when we play, no, again, I'm not going to lie. I like the idea of having this place in town for us to be like, hey, we can mm. just go hang out there. We've got the keys. Yeah. And we know nobody's going to break into it, place. It is the sheriff's office. All right. Gary was just looking at him, wondering how many meals is here. Hmm. All right. So fast forward, cut to the upstairs office. The screen, you know, he's not there. However, you find a note for you. Simri? I will read the note. Okay. We'll do Rizlagor's voice, you know. He excuses his absence. He seems to know somehow that you were successful in your mission. He notes that he is pleased. And because of his appreciation for you performing three full tasks for him, the raid on the tannery, the making yourselves known at the, you know, the church and this, he rewards has two rewards for you first he's increased the payment he offered you by half as before it's waiting in the parlor below second he invites you to meet him at the scarlet crown a manor the manor of archbaron darlis fex himself at dawn the next day No drinking tonight, boys. Mm-hmm. Heading downstairs, we find the chest that was once on the table has, you know, been kind of hidden in case somebody walked through here, but not so cleverly hidden. And examining its contents once again, we find several crimson pouches one for each of you each containing 150 gold you guys get 1200 xp 
for posting all of the decrees and relieving Stalish of duty split amongst you. So there's four of you. That's, you know, a couple hundred each. You said 1,500 gold each? Yeah. No, no. 150 gold. 1,200 XP to be split between you guys. And Simmery, the second reward in itself is the introduction to the Baron, the Arch Baron. You know, just being part of a chance to be part of that man's circle or work for him through a Slargo is a big step up for No, anyone. why we can't have hangovers the next morning. Exactly. So that evening, no drinking. Thieves in the night, we steal away back to the jailhouse and head out to the hand to the tannery where we drop one, two, three, plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. We drop the body parts in the tannery boils. No objections. All right. And you head back to rest where? Crash here in the house at the tannery with the smells. Head back to the jailhouse headquarters, pull up a chair, or back to the dilapidated living room parlor of the, the parlor, ash house. For sure. Okay. You like the ambiance? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I have had fun. But I got to say, even DMing this is a bit of an obscure challenge. I'll try to behave myself. I think uh, the players, and especially Alex, uh, coming forth doing a cameo for us, did a great job. And she has agreed, as I said at the beginning of the episode, she's bought her own microphone to permanently join this cast for the Foul Play podcast, and we will see you again in the future. Not tomorrow, not next week, not for a couple of months, but this show will revive sooner or later because it's time for evil to prevail. And we will see you next time. Say goodnight, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night.